I don't think you have any uh, problems, uh, so stick with it. <laughs> Do whatever you're doing. Anyhow, you have a great afternoon. The weather is fantastic. I feel bad for the people on the East Coast. Hey guys, welcome back to Heavy Metal Horizons. And I have here what I think is the ultimate off-grid ham radio. So this is the Lyxen Man Pack Mobile Transceiver. The model number is VV898SP. And what this is, is basically a car type mobile FM, VHF, UHF, dual band transceiver that's been put into a portable case with an internal battery power supply. And the idea here is that you've got a portable battery powered FM transceiver, but it's significantly more powerful than a standard handheld, uh, handheld HT radio. Now these are not brand new, but I have not seen very many people reviewing these radios. I was super curious about it. And now that I have it, I'm actually kind of impressed by it. So, uh, you know, I wanted to do this video for you guys just showing you how this thing works. And to be clear, this is, you know, they didn't send me this. It's not a sponsored video or anything like that. So this thing costs anywhere from 150 to like $200, depending on where you buy it. I bought this one off of AliExpress, so I think I got it for like $158. One thing that was a little strange was they shipped it in two separate packages. One package contained the radio unit itself. The other package had the microphone and the power supply and all the other stuff that went with it. And those two packages arrived at different times, which was a little annoying, but now I've got the whole thing here. So uh, that might be the same situation for you if you order it you know, through AliExpress or, or something like that. Now, I'll give you some close-ups of the radio here as I'm talking about it, but spec-wise, this is a dual-band transceiver. Um, so it's 136 to 174 megahertz VHF, and then 400 to 480 for UHF. And one thing that's kind of interesting is that is for transmitting, but for receiving, it can also receive 200 to 260 megahertz and standard FM broadcast radio as well. Now, power-wise, it's a tri-power radio. There's three different selectable power settings, 4 watts, 10 watts, or 25 watts. 25 watts is, I think, a little bit aspirational. I think probably 22 is a little bit more realistic. One thing that's um, a little bit important with that is the power supply that comes with it, which is right here. This power supply works both as a DC power supply to plug into the wall for the radio. It also doubles as the charger for the radio, but there's two different ports. So if you're using it to charge it, you plug it into one port. If you're using it to power the radio off of a wall socket, you plug it into a different port. And what's interesting is I believe the internal battery runs at like, you know, 12.7 volts as opposed to the 13.8 that actually comes from the power supply. So I believe with those advertised power ratings, if you're running the radio off of the internal battery, it's running at a slightly lower voltage. So I think you're not gonna get quite as much power as if you had it plugged into your wall. Now, one really nice thing about this is that when you order one of these radios, it comes with everything you need to make it work. So of course it comes with the radio itself, the handheld mic, it comes with an antenna, the power supply slash charger. It also comes with the programming cable, which is really nice. It works with Chirp programming software. It's very easy to use, very easy to program. It also comes with a cord to plug it into a cigarette lighter in your car. But what's odd is that the plug that goes into the radio, uh, there's no way to plug it in when you have this external case on here. So I think this, they just included it in case you wanted to remove the radio itself from the case with the battery in it and permanently install it in your car. Then you can use this cable here. Now, the other thing that comes with, which is my one complaint about this radio, it's a very minor thing, but for the antenna, it comes with a 90 degree bend here. And so you can have the antenna set up straight out like this like if you're going to carry it around in a bag or something. Or you can put the antenna on this adapter like that and then put the adapter on here if you wanted to have it, you know, I think the idea is you want to have it mounted flat with the antenna going up, but you see the problem there. Um, this adapter is a little too deep 
for how far out the socket comes from the radio. I hope that makes sense. But it makes it so you can never really tighten the, uh, the antenna down all the way. And so it's, it's always swinging around. It doesn't stay in one position, which is a little annoying. And so if you have it flat like this, the antenna just falls over. Now, it still makes a good enough connection for the antenna in terms of reception, but just physically the antenna doesn't stay in one place when you're using that 90 degree adapter. There's probably, you know, I can probably maybe just get a different adapter or something like that. But for now, I just haven't been using that. I'm just using it with the antenna straight out like that. And it works great that way too. Another thing I like about it uh, in regards to the antenna is the connector. It's using the, the PL259 connector that's right on the radio. And obviously most small radios are using a, some kind of a mini connector. So you could very easily hook this up. Like as an example, I've got an amplifier back here. And if you wanted to bring this in and almost use it as a base station, you could run this at the 10 watt setting, go into an amplifier and then, you know, reach the moon with that thing, right? So uh, just the fact that it uses a very common antenna connector and then it gives you the antenna that goes with it, it makes it so you don't have to use a bunch of adapters and. Uh, you know, cables and so forth. Now, for full specs on this radio, all the little details, I'm gonna put a link down in the video description uh, and you can see if it has everything you need on there. But just in general, some of the cool features, uh, it's got dual display and dual reception, you know, dual watch modes, so you can monitor two frequencies simultaneously. You can also listen to FM radio and a ham band, you know, a ham frequency at the same time, which is kind of neat. So. You can be talking to somebody while listening to music in the background. Uh, it has really nice scan functions, both for FM broadcast radio and for the ham bands. Uh, what I've done is I've programmed some of my local repeaters and so forth and the ham calling frequency into the memory channels. I've got like 10 different channels that I'm using there. And then you can scan through the channels or you can scan just through uh, regular frequencies, you know, the way you normally would. It also has a clock, which is kind of a neat feature. And because it has this big internal battery supply, uh, the battery's never really going to go dead enough to where the clock stops working unless you're leaving this thing for months without charging it or plugging it in. Now, let me show you the side panel here because this is pretty interesting. So uh, it's got the two inputs for the power supply that I was talking about. Uh, the one on the end here is if you're plugging it into the wall and you're just running the radio off of the power supply. The other input is for charging the internal battery. And then you've got this dual position switch here. This is the power switch. And there's one position if you're running it off the wall and there's one position if you're running it off of the internal battery. Now there's another little switch here that says in out. This is a little confusing at first glance, but this just has to do with the speaker. And what's going on is there's a speaker in the case of the radio and there's also a speaker in the microphone, right? Or I should say in the, in the hand mic. And what that little switch does, if it's in the in position, it's using the internal speaker in the, the radio case. If it's in the out position, then it's using the speaker in the handheld mic. And the other thing on here, is like a lot of things, you know, there's, a, there's an audio output which you can use to run into headphones. And what I'm gonna use it for, and a big part of the reason why I got this, is I wanna use this for my, as an aeronautical mobile ham radio. So I'm gonna have this in the airplane and then I can run this audio out into my intercom. So number one, hopefully I can hear it through my aviation headphones. And number two, so I can record it uh, when I shoot videos doing aeronautical mobile uh, radio operations. Also, weight-wise, if you're really going to be carrying this around in a backpack or a little side bag or something, this radio weighs about four pounds. So I think most of that weight comes from the battery uh, that's inside this thing. The radio itself is probably pretty light because the radio, the radio is actually very you know small, certainly less than half of the size of the case here but four pounds is nothing for tough guys like us, right?
All right, so that's kind of a general overview of the radio. Um, now let's, you know, power it up and see if we can make some contacts on it, see how it performs. But of course, guys, real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, we do cars, aviation, and radio here at Heavy Metal Horizons. If you like that stuff and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, I'm kind of in my hideout here, so I'll try some stuff inside and I'll take the radio outside as well and we'll see how it does. Okay, so we're in the hangar here, but uh, let's see if we can get somebody on one of the local repeaters or the uh, calling frequency. Kilo November 6, Victor November Echo, KN6, VNE, if there's anybody on the repeater for a quick radio check. KN6, VNE. 6, VNT, KN6YBT, over. Okay, K6YBT, uh, KN6VNE, uh, thanks very much. Uh, how's, the, uh, how's the audio? Okay, perfect. Thanks very much. Uh, what this is, is uh, one of these uh, kind of man pack radios. So it's kind of like an HT that's been put in a box with a battery power supply and all this stuff. So I'm just testing it out. The first time I got the radio on the repeater here. I don't think you have any uh, problems. Uh, so stick with it. <laughs> Do whatever you're doing. Anyhow, you have a great afternoon. The weather's fantastic. I feel bad for the people on the East Coast, but um, we can't control that. Okay, so that was, uh, that was great. That was one of the local repeaters here, and uh, pretty, good, pretty good report from him. Uh, low audio, he said a little bit, a little bit, so um, I'll see if I can increase maybe the mic gain on this, uh, but I'm not talking super loud either, so there's that. But yeah, let's try it. Uh, let's go outside here, actually, and then we'll try it on the, uh, the calling frequency and see how it does on that. Okay, we're outside now, and uh, let's try, see if we can reach somebody on the uh, calling frequency. KN6 VNE, Kilo November 6, Victor November Echo. Can anybody give me a quick radio check? KN6 VNE, Kilo November 6, Victor November Echo for a radio check, please. KN6 VNE, this is N60 EC. Okay, N60EC, I got you. Uh, how's my audio? Oh, a minute ago you had a little bit of noise, but you sound real good right now in Silmar. Silmar, okay, great. Uh, I'm over in, uh, in Van Nuys on the west side of the freeway here, so I'm just uh, testing out. This is one of these man pack radios. It's kind of a, like a mobile radio that runs off a of battery, so I'm just testing it out here. Okay, terrific. Thanks very much for the audio report and the uh, radio check. I appreciate it. 73. Okay, so that was, uh, that was pretty cool, actually. So it actually made quite a difference. I don't know if you saw that there at the end, but I lowered the radio with the antenna and just lowering it, you know, what is that, two feet maybe? Uh, the signal cut out or, you know, the reception was just below the squelch where the, the squelch killed it. So, uh, but if I have it up... Uh, if I just reach up and have it, you know, at arm's length up there, then uh, we made it all the way to Silmar. And Silmar is about 10 miles that way, so I'm pretty happy with that distance. Anyway, let's head back inside and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Okay, so like I said in the beginning, I think this is a great off-grid radio, kind of a great bug-out radio. Uh, what's cool about it is that you can get power levels that you would normally get from a car-mounted radio. Uh, but you can get it in a truly, you know, not quite handheld, kind of, but a portable radio. So you, you can still get a, a good power level, uh, but you're not tied to your car or tied to the electrical grid or anything like that. The radio itself works really well. It's got good coverage. Um, like I said, it's got VHF and UHF ham bands, even really b b beyond the actual ham bands. So you theoretically could listen to you know police and fire and that kind of stuff but then the reception uh, also covers a lot of other frequencies as well so FM radio broadcast and that third um, you know the, the 200 megahertz uh, ham band as well so being able to receive more uh, is always just overall better for situational awareness and it's, it's got a good uh, reception coverage the only thing I wish it had is 
like some AM reception for AM broadcast radio and also aviation band radio. I would love to be able to get that on this radio. Now, of course, some of the modern small handheld radios do have aviation band coverage, but they don't have nearly the power level that this one does here or the, the talk time, you know, the, the sort of battery reserve that this thing has. Anyway, overall, you know, if you shop around, you can get this for like $150, $160. Uh, $158 was what I paid for this. And it includes everything, the antenna, the programming cable, all that stuff. And $150 bucks is it's kind of like a, a mid-level uh, HT radio. I mean, there's a lot of handheld walkie-talkie type radios that are even more expensive than that. And I think you're getting a lot more capability with this radio. So... Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, a little bit of a strange radio. There's not too many of these man pack uh, type radios out there, but it's pretty cool. And I think for the price, you're getting something that's pretty capable. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a, a few different links in the video description down below. If you want to pick one of these up, you can get it on AliExpress. I believe you can get it. You can definitely get it on eBay. I think maybe you can get them on Amazon as well. So I'll put a bunch of links down there for that. And those different links are gonna be different prices. I don't care which one you click on, whatever you wanna do. If you're interested in getting one of these radios, check it out down in the video description below. Okay, but let me know what you think of this radio down in the comment section below. Do you think it's just a gimmick? Do you think it's missing something important? Or do you really like it, like me? Let me know, I'd love to read your thoughts down there in the comment section. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you soon.